Northeast is the call to make. Whether you're buying your first home or you're a seasoned investor, Terry Kalakos and his team of mortgage and real estate brokers can help. It's simple and it's free. Make your dreams come true. Call Northeast. Good afternoon, everyone. You're listening to The Real Estate Show. I'm your host, Terry Kalakos, chartered real estate and mortgage broker, super duper extraordinaire, and president of Northeast Real Estate and Mortgage Agency, as well as CBC Alliance. And today we're talking about the commercial real estate market. Joining me, we have my beautiful co-host, Marav Marciano, chartered real estate and mortgage broker and vice president of Northeast and CBC Alliance. Hey, What's I'm going not on? super duper extraordinary. No, I'm super duper today. Wow. <laughs> Today's my super duper day. It is my birthday coming up, so that's not very cool. We'll see. When it's your birthday, I'll be super duper. You'll be super duper. <laughs> <laughs> Feel free to reach us at uh, the office at 514 680 4674, or you could visit us online at www.nordest.ca. You could also visit our Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash Northeast Nordest and facebook.com slash CBC Alliance Quebec. And uh, if you haven't done so, you have to subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is newsonthego.ca. So uh, today's show is all about commercial real estate. But before we actually get into that, I do want to uh, update people a little bit because we have been talking about interest rates over the last little while on our shows. And um, in the last show that we did, I had made mention that the five-year fixed rates for residential mortgages. Okay, so now we're not talking commercial. We're talking residential mortgages. Um, they had actually dropped down a little bit. This week, however, due to the fact that it's been so popular that people uh, have been converting their variables over to fixed rates, we have seen the banks actually increase those five-year fixed rates a tiny bit, even though the bond yields have kind of remained stable. So <laughs> there you go. Marav is laughing. Okay. But Everybody we all know. Needs to. Yeah, exactly. Know. We all know that banks will do everything that they possibly can to put as much profit as they possibly can into their pockets to make sure they make their shareholders happy and everyone. So uh, we did see that occur this week. Um, the five-year fixed rates on insured rates have gone up by a tiny bit. It's about 15 to 20 basis points, depending on the lender that we're talking about. So it's nothing earth shattering, but nonetheless, it has gone up. And again, 15 to 20 basis points, what does that mean? So 20 basis points would be 0.20 of a percent. Okay. So it's nothing crazy, but it is a change that has occurred from last week. Okay. okay. Interesting. The update. Yeah. There you go. I thought that it was important for our listeners to actually be aware of that. Uh, and if you do actually want to lock in your interest rates, uh, you could do so. You can call us. Uh, if you have a variable rate, we'll look at securing you a fixed rate. And usually we could secure those fixed rates for up to 120 days. So it gives you enough of a runway to be able to determine whether you want to stay with your variable or actually take that fixed rate that we locked for you. And okay. it's free, which is beautiful. Okay, good to know. All right, so let's talk commercial. commercial. Let's talk about what we're actually here to talk about today. So commercial <laughs> real estate got hit hard during COVID. Yeah. Some some got hit and some got some profited from... Some got hit, some got shut down and some profited. Yeah, exactly. absolutely. So I think it depends. When we say commercial, it's very broad. When we say commercial, you can have multi-residential, you can have... Uh, commercial condos in right. there. You can have retail space. You can have, um, you can have office buildings. You can have all kinds of different. You can have industrial. Yep. So there's a lot of different types of commercial property. So definitely the word commercial is very general, um, and they all got hit differently, and some of them did not. You know, m one of my first questions that I have, and I think that this is probably uh, the question that's on a lot of people's minds, is. When we're talking about office space, you brought it up. Is everyone back to work? What does it look like right now um, in the kind of office space world? So that's a good question. So what we're seeing the trend with the majority of companies that I speak to, it's a hybrid model right now. 
Uh, a lot of their staff is back, some of them one day a week, some two days a week, and some three days a week. But I'm not seeing a lot that have their staff back full time yet. So you'll see a lot of mm-hmm. offices uh, half empty or, um, you know, you have still a lot of people who are working from home. And for the owners of the businesses, some of them like it because there's no transportation and things like that. So you know that the person is focused. They're not spending an hour in traffic coming into work. Um, others don't like it at all because they can't just pop into their office to ask a question. It's mm-hmm. not about watching someone. It's not even about that. A lot of employees might think, oh, you don't need to watch me. I'm independent. It's not about watching. Uh, sometimes it's it's about the connection that you have when the person is in the office with you. Yeah, I, I think that uh, I think that you're right. And, you know, I've I've made reference to this in the past where I said where, you know, once it becomes socially acceptable for companies to force uh, employees back to work, they will do that. And we see, look, I mean, just this week, right? So uh, all COVID mandates are done, right? So travel restrictions are lifted. Everything is lifted right now. No more mask mandates, no more arrive can, no more anything like that as of October 1st. Mm -hmm. So because we've seen this change and the government is saying at this point, you know, we saw the Biden administration say COVID is over. You know, he, he, I'm glad he announced that. I didn't know. Yeah. (laughs) COVID is over. If Biden says it's over, it's over, right? I mean, but people are still getting sick, obviously. I mean, the the numbers are still there. But um, I think that the governments need to get things back to normal. And so they've basically said COVID is over. Uh, There's no more mandates. There's no more this. There's no more that. I think that at this point, I would say that by 2023, I think that it'll become socially acceptable for an employer to push people back to work. You're shaking I'm your head shaking disagreeing. Head. No. So the trend that I'm seeing is a lot of employers didn't realize that some of their employees are very productive at home. Yes, there are some that are not. They're doing laundry half the day. But the majority are very productive at home. Uh, there's less chit-chat. Uh, you know, we both know at the office there's a lot of chit-chat and waste of time. Um, so... You know, there's like mixed feelings. Some of I had to are execute like... my presidential role this week at the <laughs> office. Marav and Olympia and Betty were chit-chatting at reception. And I came in and I said, I'm executing my presidential role. Go back to work. There's way too much work to do to sit around chit-chatting. But it does yeah. waste a lot of time. The statistic was that true. the average employee is about 50% productive in a day at the office. That's pre-COVID. Uh, so maybe, you know, at home you do have a better productivity. So you've got the mixed feelings there, but you, you do lose that social interaction that is much needed in a work environment. And I think it's important, right? I mean, the, the social interaction is, is important. It's I'm, I'm zoomed out. I'm going to be honest with you. I can't do any more zooms. I can't do anything like that. I, um, you want to see people in 3D, not 2D. Anymore. Yeah, I, I love being with people. I love yeah. interacting with people. You know, uh, our office is open. People come. It's anyways. I get it. I get it. Zoomed out. Zoomed out. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> now, when it comes to uh, investors also, uh, I wanted to ask you a question. You were mentioning mortgage rates. Yeah. Um, where do we see mortgage rates going with respect to uh, to variables? Because a lot of investors are on variable rates. And what I hear a lot of banks yeah. tell me uh, for my investors is keep them on a variable. It'll go back down and, uh, you know, and basically like at least if they want to convert or break it, it's I, a small it's, penalty. Yeah, it's it's the, I would tend to echo that. Um, it's dangerous to go, it's dangerous to stay on a variable. It's dangerous to go fixed. Okay, so there's there's pros and cons to both. And I think the individual themselves are the ones that are going to be able to determine whether or not they should go one way or another. So their risk tolerance at the end of the day, Uh, for my my personal opinion, if you're on a variable and you have a very good variable, so have a good discount, keep it. Why not? Okay, even if in the short term, you're going to have some pain where it's going to go up by next year, it'll go back down. And if it goes back down, well, then you're you're laughing again. If you end up converting and switching over to a fixed, look, we saw right now, the Mm -hmm. banks, what are they doing? They're anticipating that there's going to be another increase with the Bank of Canada next month. 
right? Yeah. So because they're anticipating that there's going to be another increase and they know at this point, this is the threshold. This is the threshold where you end up having the variable rates surpassing the mm -hmm. possible fixed rates, right? So they want to profit from that. They know that they're going to have a slew of people coming in to convert those mortgages. So because you're going to have a bunch of people coming in to convert those mortgages, let's profit. Let's get as much money as we can from it. And then when those rates slip back down, come February, March, April, whenever it happens next year, these people, when they're going to want to break those mortgages, they're going to have to pay much larger penalties to get out of them. Yeah, I agree. So what we're seeing now, the trend... Uh, is basically to have a variable rate with fixed payments in order to manage your cash flow well as an investor because that's really important. You don't want your mortgage payments fluctuating like crazy. Yeah. Uh, so we are seeing that. And in anticipation for the end of this month's um, announcement, yeah. I think it's October 26th or 28th, if I remember correctly, yeah. uh, we'll, we'll find out what's going to happen with the variable rates. Yeah. The good news is inflation has been coming down uh, and it's been coming down steadily. So I... I don't think it's going to be as hard hit uh, of an increase uh, compared to other ones. But let's see. I think that uh, only time will tell. When we come back, we're going to be looking at how multi-residential investors are being affected by the current market. But first, we're off to the CJD Traffic Center. You're listening to The Real Estate Show, and today we're talking about the commercial real estate market and where we're headed. Feel free to visit us online at www.nordest.ca, or you can reach us at the office by the telephone at 514-680-4674. Don't laugh at me. By the telephone. Do not laugh at me. Or I'm... you can use the Google oh, to find gosh. us as okay. well. Or the Facebook. Okay, let's talk about... <laughs> See, this is my life, people. Okay, this is this is what I, I have to. I love it. I know she loves me, but this is what I have to deal with. Okay. <laughs> so we talk multi residential. Let's, let's talk, talk multi residential. Let's talk here. serious here. Okay, multi residential buyers right now are having a hard time cash flowing. We mentioned this yeah. uh, a little bit earlier. Um, when you're looking at the price of you know the high purchase prices uh, versus the rents that are coming in, and also when you're looking at interest rates and and the payments and everything, I mean. What can people do? Where nowadays investors who want to buy commercial, like um, multi residential yeah. real estate, are having a hard time. It mm. it is hard. Um, the prices, I don't want to say don't make sense, but they don't make sense. But they don't make sense based off of the rent. The I rents. mean, we have rent control in Quebec, obviously, and I think that that's a big thing, right? I think the buildings, if you look at them as an outsider and say. If it was collecting the right amount of rents, this, Beautiful. this building would be worth the price they're asking. But then would they go on the market? Would they be sold? Exactly. They wouldn't be sold if it was cash flowing. Who would sell something that's providing them a passive income? So unless people there's... that want to kill their golden goose. No, but it is possible there. You know, there's certain things that happen in families. Sometimes you have to sell. I have a story. OK, I have a story. OK, and this is something um, it's not a direct story, okay, but it's a kind of, uh, it's, a, it's a story that I've heard, okay? So there was a gentleman recently uh, who one of our brokers had met with, and this guy ended up inheriting 80 doors, okay? Free and clear, no mortgages on them. 80 doors, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to extrapolate what the numbers would be. Even if you went conservative, and you did an average across the board of $1,000 a door. That's a very nice passive income. That's a very nice passive income. Yeah. Do you yeah. know what this person did? They turned around and sold the 80 doors because they believed that they would get a better return by taking that money and investing it in the markets. Look, and the markets you're are a down real now. estate investor, so you're sort of <sighs> partial. You like the real estate investment. You talk to a crypto guy or a stocks guy. Or you know a... the story of the golden goose? <laughs> I know the story of the golden goose. But everybody's goose is different, Terry. Your goose is real estate. Other people's goose might be something else. All right. Okay. <laughs> I like my goose. <laughs> I like gray goose. <laughs> <laughs> Please go on. <laughs> So it is difficult as a, somebody who wants to, you know, a lot of people want to get into the investment market and in multi-residential. It is very difficult. 
Um, so sometimes you have to get creative, whether it's adding more sources of revenues, yeah. renting out parking spots. We talked about this in previous shows. Uh, putting uh, laundry machines in the basement that you rent out, adding an apartment that was a basement uh, that wasn't being used yep. as long as there's windows and all the necessary legalities. Yep. Um, you know, tenants leaving, do, doing full renovations of places and then renting them out. So there's different ways of increasing your rents, but like you say, you have to go into it seeing the win. If you know that within six months or a year or whatever it is, you're going to go from cash flow negative to positive, then yes, go for it. Otherwise, it becomes a little bit uh, difficult to buy real estate in this market. So the interesting thing, uh, and, and this is one of the things that I love about real estate, and I, I want I want our listeners to hear me well right now. So we're used to, so imagine, if you will, okay, going into your bank or going in to see your financial advisor, or whoever you're going to go to, and you say to him, I want to buy mutual funds, or I want to buy stocks, or whatever you want to buy, okay? So you say, I want to buy mutual funds. Um, and you say, by the way, I only want mutual funds of companies that are operating in the downtown core of Montreal. N now, you're, you have, Marav has this very, confused you know, confused look, look on her, and she's <laughs> going, where are you going with this? Yes. Okay. What happens? You're a victim at that point of that specific market. I don't I don't even think that there's a mutual fund that exists that would say this is for you know businesses that are operating in the downtown core of Montreal. But this is the problem that I find a lot of real estate investors have. When they're buying real estate, they're going to focus on certain areas. They're going to say I want to buy in Griffintown, I want to buy in Lachine, I want to buy in LaSalle because that's what they're used to, that's the neighborhood that they know. Let's go to a real real estate investor and this is not to insult anyone okay so please don't misunderstand what i'm saying when i say a real real estate investor a real real estate investor does not care where the property is located what they care about is ultimately the cash flow right so they're gonna buy in montreal if it makes sense they're gonna buy in quebec city if it makes sense. They're going to buy in Ottawa. They're going to buy in Vancouver. They're going to buy in Detroit. They're going to buy in Atlanta I and everywhere it, else. The beautiful thing about real estate is that just like a mutual fund where you can go out and buy something that is invested in different countries or different parts of the world, but is a certain class, so a certain sector of the economy is in that mutual fund, the same thing could be done with your real estate. You just have to be able to set yourself up properly to manage it, right? So you got to make sure that you're able to collect the rents and everything else. So I would, my personal advice is to make sure that you're not limiting yourself geographically when you're buying real estate. Try and expand and try and find resources that will actually help you in those communities that you're going to be buying, number one. The other thing that you could look at is obviously stretching out your amortizations. Why limit yourself to 25 years, 30 years? There's lenders that'll go to 40, mm -hmm. right? So if you're able to go to 40 years amortization, why not try and do it? Yeah, you just increase the money in your pocket every month. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Sorry, that's my rant. No, absolutely. You know me, I rant sometimes. So. No, 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 never. <laughs> <laughs> you are buying she, a business. <laughs> yeah, she has to live with me, people. Imagine, okay? <laughs> you are buying a business after all, so it's important that you look at it as a business and not as something emotional. Absolutely. Exactly. I can I, to can, so can I just say so funny when we were coming in um I I was listening to to very peaceful music because I told Marav it's how I relax and she says to me uh because and then I started complaining about the traffic and I'm like oh my god this road is closed and, and she's like the music's not really helping you relax there <laughs> I, I like to rant anyway sorry go on I wanted to touch about <laughs> to touch a little bit about construction, yeah. but that was like ten minutes ago before you started your rant. <laughs> um, I just wanted to mention that we saw a trend mm -hmm. in Toronto that uh, about a third of the uh, new builds, the starts, yeah, yeah, they've all been put on hold or even completely canceled. Uh, we don't see a something as drastic over here in Montreal, but we do see we have seen some projects. We've seen some fail. projects yeah. uh, being put on hold or. Uh, or go bust, uh, you know, and sometimes it has to do with holding onto the land with a, a private loan on yeah. it. It's a, it, it could be costly if you're delaying things. Sometimes it has to do with construction material going up. So we've seen even some preliminary contracts being revisited. That's and right. And some people, yeah. the, the purchase price has been brought up because the 
material has been brought up, the construction material. So it is important when you're looking at new construction to obviously uh, know that the cost of building has gone up. And as whether it's as a consumer or as a builder, mm-hmm. it's it's definitely a different market right now. I agree. And, um, you know, this is... I think that it's important that, you know, and then we're now we're kind of diving back into maybe if you want residential individuals, but if you are buying a new construction or you are doing something like that, you just got to make sure that your your down payments and everything that you've put in are protected and that it's probably set properly set up because mm-hmm. otherwise you could find yourself in a situation where your money is is gone, right? I mean, it's it happens and it's important to know that it's in a market like this where people were counting on interest rates to remain low and to pay a certain amount for the construction material and stuff like that if it's not yeah you know absolutely uh, builders are definitely <clears throat> feeling the pinch between the real estate uh, uh, interest rates the mortgage interest rates sorry and uh, and cost of material and uh, we have to understand when the price goes up or when a project gets canceled there's a reason behind it You're listening to The Real Estate Show. Guys, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is newsonthego.ca. You could also visit us online at www.nordest.ca. When we come back, we're going to be talking to a commercial real estate broker who will give us his take on the commercial market. But first, we're off to a CTV News Update. You're listening to The Real Estate Show, and today we're talking about the commercial real estate market. Joining us on the line, we have one of our very own and our super-duper amazing. You see, I added the super-duper and amazing commercial real estate brokers from Coldwell Banker Commercial. Lewis Goodman Hoppenheim. Try saying that name three times. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Lewis. How are you, my friend? Terry, thank you, and Mary. Uh, as well, thank you for having me. It's, uh, it's exciting to be here. Exciting to see. Uh, welcome, how I can welcome. Help people. Yeah, I'm happy to have you. It's uh, it's been uh, it's been a long time coming. So uh, we uh, we love you. And Lewis, I have to say, is probably uh, one of our. You know, we have a lot of very talented brokers at Coldwell, but Lewis is one of our top talented brokers so um, well you did call him super duper he's super duper <laughs> he's my super duper guy Lewis before we get started uh, you know I, I think that it's important for our listeners to know a little bit about you how long have you been doing this have how long have you been in the commercial world well since I graduated uh, from university in, in 1982 and I've personally completed over 900 transactions in wow. office industrial and retail leasing I also personally own commercial properties that's fantastic that's excellent. And now that uh, now that COVID is quote unquote over, um, like what are you seeing right now with respect to vacancies in the commercial market? Uh, with respect to different sectors, of course. Yeah, the three sectors being office, industrial, and retail. I'll, I'll start with office. Offices is about seventeen percent, and suburbs are a few percentage points lower because employees are preferring to work closer to home. And I found that the higher and lower class buildings are actually doing a little bit better because either companies want to sort of treat their employees to that Ritz-Carlton experience, if you will. And then there's companies that are just looking for office space to uh, save money. As far as industrial, they fluctuate at the incredibly low numbers of between one and and one and a half percent. And as many new buildings are going up on speculation, and with the high interest rates, it could easily go to 2%. And finally, the most fun aspect of uh, commercial real estate is retail, because you know we all love to walk around and shop. Uh, that's at about 12%. I was actually surprised by that number when I saw that. I thought it would be higher. For retail, I thought that stores would be hit harder mm. uh, in COVID, but I think, uh, what, what do you think uh, happened, Louis? It's the surge that everybody is now ready to go out back into the world and, and, and be with people and shop. I think you know, online will continue to do well, but people enjoy the experience of going out with their family, with their friends, and having an outing, uh, shopping and, and, and dining. So I think, I think that's helping. So you've seen a lot of new businesses open or is well, more? That's, that's what I was going to yeah. actually say, because I, I think that. So he, here's a speculation on my part. Is it possible during COVID we saw a lot of retail stores shut down? I mean, we you just have yeah, to. Yeah, we did see it. We did see it. You just have to, you know, drive up and down most streets and you'll see them shut down. Um, 
And now that they've reopened and there's new businesses coming in, the rents are higher for these well, new businesses? Have we seen that? Landlords are, you know, when a tenant rents space, it's not just the net rent that they have to be interested in. It, it's the total rent. Sure. And unfortunately, municipal taxes uh, continue to increase. And they also include the tenant's business tax. And uh, streets are being renovated, and landlords have waited a, a long time to, for example, such as St. Denis, St. Laurent Boulevard, and landlords have just been waiting a long time, and, and they're hoping to uh, attract these higher rents. And, and the best way for a, a tenant to protect themselves is by giving into the landlord's higher rent and just asking for a good amount of renovations and, and a good amount of free rent. But if you if you drive on streets like Saint Laurent Boulevard between uh, Prince Arthur and Pine Avenue, I mean uh, there there isn't a vacancy. Right. Yes, streets like Saint Denis um, are uh, are slowly making a comeback because it was closed for so long. But uh, two of the properties I have are in Plaza Saint Hubert, that four block section with the uh, the city just renovated with the covered sidewalks uh e even though even that street uh, are making a comeback and my properties there are, are fully leased to restaurants i prefer tenants in the food business because people always have to eat versus uh, shopping online for clothes Makes interesting sense. um and when we're talking about you know um office leasing right now are we seeing a lot of companies downsizing have we seen Stuff like that happening over the last little while? Well, they're definitely downsizing. I have a wife and two daughters that work uh, for companies, and um, they are downsizing. As, uh, some people are, are preferring to work from home and, and may, in some instances, actually want to forego salaries for the privilege of doing so. And uh, employers are finding that, uh, you know, it's cheaper to rent open office space versus smaller enclosed offices. And they're creating these soundproof type rooms for, for phone calls and meetings. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. So you're seeing a lot of landlords basically say I need less square footage now that a part of my staff is working from home. That's the common Correct. trend? And, okay. and now that COVID is over, people are, are more than willing, well, hopefully over. I think it'll all, always be with us. But as people are better protected and vaccinated, mm -hmm. people don't mind sharing offices. So if you one works on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, the other one can come in Tuesdays and Thursdays, let's say. Okay. Well, which we've seen in a few businesses yes. that we know of very closely where you'll have, you know, a, a rotation. So one office is shared by two or three people and obviously reducing the amount of footprint that they have. Interesting. Yeah. And now with respect to industrial, we're seeing vacancies at, at an all-time low. We're seeing price per square foot at an all-time high. Do you think that this trend is going to continue or do you think this trend is, trend is heading well, for new construction, they're definitely going to continue to climb, at, and um, that's because we still don't have a handle on costs such as construction, uh, labor, and where interest rates are going, uh, which is obviously your your guy's specialty. And uh, depending on the height, um, you know, the lower the height, the cheaper the rent, because it's all about uh, cubic square footage. They can range anywhere from 14 net to $21 net. Now, earlier in the conversation, I said tenants don't, you know, shouldn't just concern themselves with the net rent. It's really the, the gross rent, which includes the net rent and the expenses, um, such as municipal tax, school tax, insurance, uh, snow removal, uh, et cetera. So, you know what, I just want to bounce back on something because I think uh, whenever I see an opportunity to educate our listeners, I think that it's important. Whenever we're talking about office space or we're talking about residential space or anything like that, it's always per square foot, right? So we always look at per, per, per square, square foot. This is per what, year. Per year, Correct. exactly. But interestingly enough, when we're talking industrial, we're talking based on cubic foot. Do you want to explain a little bit about that? Well, no, industrial, it's a fair question, but industrial is still quoting on a per square foot basis. For now, sure. You take, this, would hit, take the square footage of, of uh, 10,000 feet times 20 feet clear, you have, uh, have 200,000 cubic feet. But right. uh, I haven't seen anybody yet charging by the cubic foot. Of course. But <laughs> why is cubic feet so important? I know because the answer, but I want our people to know the answer. 
Right, because it's all about uh, stacking, uh, shelving, and, and exactly. stacking pallets. How many pallet foot positions are there, or how, uh, you know, how many pallets can I cram into this box? Yeah, is what tenants are, are concerned about. Uh, because the cost of a forklift that that can go sixteen feet to thirty-two feet is is incrementally smaller. So the the reason why I um, I wanted to to touch on that a little bit and and kind of expand on it is because I've actually had people reach out to me wanting to purchase industrial spaces uh, or what they would deem as industrial space because they heard that industrial space is literally the best uh, you know investment that you could do right now and it is true but however if you know the clearance in that room is ten feet for example. It's not gonna. It's not the same thing as if you have a clearance of thirty feet or forty feet or whatever. So yeah. okay, I just wanted to to go through that a little bit. I think that these prices per square foot are definitely hurting the small and medium businesses versus the big businesses that are able to afford uh, double the rent for, versus last year uh, versus a few years ago. So I think uh, we're gonna see a little shift over there with respect to small and medium businesses. The largest industrial landlord of small spaces has a name of a watch uh, we've all uh, known over the years and if you call him now looking for a thousand to two thousand square feet maybe he has one space and maybe it has a truck level door so this this particular landlord who has over well over a thousand doors is is the barometer of, of how the market is going. So the industrial market is, is still strong. Tenants can't believe it. And uh, unless they're protected, which if I have the time, uh, I'd love to talk well, to you more yeah. about what they need to do. You know what? Give me, uh, give us uh, two seconds. We're just going to bounce over to the CJAD Traffic Center and we'll be back with Lewis Goodman Hoppenheim. Thanks for tuning in today. We're talking about commercial real estate. You're listening to The Real Estate Show. You can reach us at the office at 514-680-4674. And on the line with us, we have Lewis Goodman Hoppenheim, broker that everyone should be calling for all their commercial and real estate needs, uh, multi-residential as well as leasing. I think you just like saying his name. I love the name, Lewis Goodman Hoppenheim. (laughs) I could say it all day long. <laughs> we were talking before about um, about leasing and things like that. I was actually curious, uh, Lewis, when it comes to commercial leasing, uh, what what do you suggest when it comes to tenants, landlords? What are some of the what's some of the advice you give them? Well, frankly, I don't know if I have enough time to answer this question. This is, <laughs> short an- this is my short answer. Landlords are always out to maximize their income, whether it's in office, industrial, retail leasing, before and after a lease is signed. Okay. So, but, now, yeah, you, sorry, go on. I think which begs the question, how can that be possible after a lease is signed? That's what I was going to say. That's that's why I was like, huh? <laughs> I think he so, was waiting. Yeah. <laughs> for my you confusion. thought only your wife can read your mind. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so by inserting clauses in their leases that tenants do not really concern themselves with at the time, the main one being increases in landlord's expenses. Based on my unique experience as a commercial broker, by having worked as a, a leasing VP at Rose Dev, a really sharp landlord, and done over 900 transactions, I learned how a tenant can protect themselves. And a few examples are, a tenant should never be responsible for repairs unless they cause the damage. It's like leasing a car with a warranty. Right? Now, obviously, if their truck backs up into the building, they have to fix that. Yeah, but that so would be their that, insurance that, anyways. That would be covering that. Right, but yeah. depending on their deductible, et right. cetera, they might not want to even claim it. So right. this is the number one way, and, and I could go on for, for, for too long, but I'll, I'll, I'll talk about some other points. You know, tenants, especially in this day and age, have to make sure they have an option to renew, and it's best to have it at a predetermined rent, which is either a dollar amount or, worst-case scenario, a cost of living. They never want to leave it to the rent as market because if market is going up, as we're seeing now, they're, they're going to suffer. Tenants who are renewing now are literally in shock. And that's why a vast majority of them want to buy a property. And you have to look at yourself. Is it a big deal to pay $300 a square foot? Well, you know, it's better to pay $300 a square foot than it is to pay $20 a square foot net rent. 
So these are conversations that they need to have with their accountant, and I'm happy to guide them on. Other things a tenant should be looking for is if, if they're going to move into a property and spend all this money, they should want to have a right to buy the building, ideally at a fixed price, if not at least a right of first refusal, which means if somebody else comes along to buy the building, the landlord has to show the tenant the offer, and the tenant has a right to match it in a certain period of time. Okay. And would you say it's important, I already know the answer, but would you say it's important to be represented by a real estate broker as a tenant rather than going straight to the listing broker? There's a listing, you know, a party's responsible to represent who it has an agreement with. Now, if you ask one of the largest industrial landlords in the city of Montreal, he will tell you that clients get better deals when they're represented by brokers. So I'm here... You know, based on my education, I love, you know, I treat people like I like to be treated. I hold hands from A to Z, and it's just, it's such an important decision for someone in commercial, in a commercial business to to, to rent space or to buy a building, and uh, I want to be there for them. So it's... Uh, it, it's a personal, it's a, it's a very personal thing. I'm the type of, of, of guy that likes to meet people at their office. You, know, you get to learn much more about them. You get to see their needs. And I get to explain to them how I, I, I can best protect them. Now, to be frank, you don't always, I don't always win my points because landlords are tough. But it's important that I explain to the tenants the rules of the game and how to best play their cards. And and they appreciate that. And that's how I get a lot of referrals, for which I'm grateful. And it, it's true. I mean, I, I think that there's there hasn't been a single client that, you know, whether it's Coldwell or Northeast or anyone that has referred to Lewis, um, the amount of positive feedback that we get um, is very impressive. So and that's yeah. why you're on the show but with I, us today. So. Thank you for that. And as much as you appreciate saying my name, not everybody's going to remember it. Yes, I'm trying to be a good man. But I'm an easy number away in Montreal. It's five one four two three four five six seven eight. There you go. It's, not very it's an easy number to remember and call <laughs> with pleasure. Probably one of the easiest numbers in the industry. Two three four five six seven eight. Lewis, <laughs> thank you. Thank, thank you, you for so your much, time, Lewis. Have a great day. Pleasure. You too. Bye bye. Bye. So you know when I, I do want to add this and the importance of having a good broker representing you. So I'm going to go into one of my stories. So bear with me here, Marav. Uh, five, six years ago, um, the unfortunate thing is that this particular person was even a friend of ours. Um, they had leased an industrial space to put their business. It was a manufacturing business. And when they put it in, the landlord was very desperate to get someone in that place. And they ended up paying, I don't remember how much the amount was, but it was about 2 to $3 a square foot. Okay, to, to, or maybe a little bit more, but it was it was very low. It was under five dollars a square foot that they were paying. Fast forward, you know, this person gets hit with COVID. Uh, you know, his his industry slows down. He's got problem after problem. Always pays the rent on time. Always does everything that needs to be done. Well, guess what? The landlord, the five year lease came up for renewal, right now in in last month, and the new rent because it wasn't stipulated how much it was going to go up by, because they said it's going to be the market rent, went up to 12 or $13 a square foot. Yep, Almost that. three times, mm-hmm. if not more than three times, what he was paying. Yes, that's what I was saying. For yeah. m- small and medium businesses, this hurts a lot. Maybe a large corporation could afford the $12, $15, $20 a square foot, but for a small, medium a uh, company definitely it, it hurts it's going to hurt their pocket yeah. and uh, it could bring them out of business absolutely and unfortunately this person had to actually shut down the business because of the increase in rent mm. so sad. it's very sad um but this is the reality of what a lot of industrial um you know tenants are facing right now yeah so now tomorrow is a big day yeah. Voting day. Please go out and vote. Make sure that, uh, you know, you get your voting hat on. Vote properly. Vote, uh, you know. Vote with your heart and your mind and your soul and 
What all with your brain? Infor- all the information <laughs> in hand. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And um, if people want to get a hold of us, you can always reach us at the office. You can call us at 514 680 4674. You could also visit us online at www.nordest.ca. As well, if you haven't done so already, please take a moment. You can go into the Google machine, <laughs> into the search bar, and just type newsonthego.ca. That'll take you directly to our YouTube channel where all our shows live and breathe. Uh, and you can watch them um, live. You could see all the silliness that happens in the studio during the commercial breaks. And there's silliness that occurs, but that's that's okay. This is who we are. Uh, We're also on Spotify. Yeah, you can listen to our podcast on Spotify as well as on uh, iTunes. I think we're basically on every platform. You can't escape us. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and if you happen to search for Terry Kalakos on Spotify, please ignore my playlists. You know Now me. that you said that, they're all going to search for them. Exactly, absolutely. <laughs> Guys, please, again, go out and vote tomorrow. It's very important uh, if you haven't already done the pre-voting. Um, till next week, everyone, have a blessed week. Love you all. Northeast is the call to make. Whether you're buying your first home or you're a seasoned investor, Terry Kalakos and his team of mortgage and real estate brokers can help. It's simple and it's free. Make your dreams come true. Call Northeast. 